as I have taken on the very ambitious task of recreating the castle from Howl's Moving Castle inside of Blender, I've been doing my research on how I can best present this in a way befitting a Ghibli film. So let's examine the process I'm going to go through to try and recreate the Ghibli identity without necessarily creating a fully stylized scene, similar to what I did in my Suzume recreation. How can we reflect the insanity of the hand-drawn stuff? Because I swear to god, Hell's Moving Castle within the movie changes between each shot. It is a different castle, practically, with like different buildings, different placements, different colours. Like, everything changes a lot within all of the different versions, the different posters and all of that. So how do we reflect this? Well, I'll give you two concepts which are pretty simple, they're not necessarily the easiest to achieve, but they'll take you very far. Which is complicated layered texture work and then also messy organic modelling. Don't focus too much on symmetry and getting measurements correct and stuff, it's mainly just getting across the feel and the proportions because if you think about how you were doing this with hand-drawn art, if you had to make this castle on like all of these different frames and all of that, you don't want to have to go and like measure like five centimeters to the right every time that you want to like place like a different like building and all of that. Like you could, but the feel of this thing is like a big, big hunk of moving metal with like all of these like completely unrealistic and gravity-defying aspects and stuff. So why bother? Because it doesn't actually serve the narrative of this thing. So you know, keep that narrative element in mind. Honestly, with like most of these things, like even Suzume, even like Mononoke and all of that, be quite like sporadic with it. Like paint like you're painting a 2D thing would be like my kind of like mind-boggling advice for you, you know. Look at this, um, look at this node setup here, guys. Basically three like uh, full PBR materials which are just being mixed together with different uh, textures being used as their factors. And we end up with this nice layer of like grunge, we end up with this nice layer of like mossy stuff, and then this kind of like metallic sheen layer as well. Got some rust going on. And yeah, we're just trying to mirror that um, feel that's in the movie. Obviously our colours aren't actually the same, but again it's the feel, it's those essential elements. And I keep coming back to that because it, it is really just important that you don't fixate too much on creating pixel for pixel, color value for color value, the exact thing. They'll take you there, but it's gonna take longer and you're gonna lose your own identity in this whole like recreation thing because like, I think that everyone's goals are different, but ultimately when I do a recreation, I want it to have some of me in there, you know? All of my modeling is just like very much like, can I fit this thing in here? Like, is that clipping? Is it not clipping? It doesn't really matter. Does it look like roughly in the same spot, you know? Like, oh, these, these tiles, you know? I am like going through and grabbing like pieces of these tiles and I can just like, you know, like bounce them around with proportional editing and like turn that off and like, you know, move and rotate like a tile just like out of whack and, you know, I want, I want everything to look kind of imperfect, you know, like somebody's just going through and bashing a bunch of like lines together. Like that, that is part of the Ghibli style, the Ghibli charm, you know, so you never know what you're getting, it's erratic, it's um, unpredictable, and it's just human, you know, it's human looking because computer generated imagery, all right, CGI. What we're making in Blender here, this shit's mathematically perfect, man. This stuff is really, really good at making exactly what you tell it to do, all right? And I know that some of you may think, oh, Blender never listens to me. I mean, people say this about code too, like people who find coding hard, which is like, I'm one of those people, by the way. Coding's not easy, but the computer really is just taking the raw instructions that you're giving it, and it's not questioning them, it's not doing any of its own thinking, it's just, it'll just do them. And so if you don't tell it, to add all of these human imperfections, you know, and this, you can't just tell it, like, I want the Ghibli film, alright, that's, that, that's stuff that AI is, like, trying to do right now, but, like, Blender's not gonna do that for you, so you gotta go in and you gotta add all of these imperfections through your own kind of workflow, you know, then when you take it into post, you gotta add those scratch maps, you gotta add that kind of, like, haze, and you gotta clip the colours and up the exposure a bit, you know, make it look a bit washed out, like it's an old anime. Seeing as my Howl's Moving Castle model and render are still a work in progress, let's actually take a look at my Suzume render as a case study. Why does this far more photo real and ray traced render still hold the same nice feel? Now overall this is going to boil down to several things. We've got our composition, which we can examine some film screenshots for. We've got our mise-en-scene, and lastly we have got our colours and our post-processing. Essentially, while we shift away from the amazing watercolour and line art style, we still retain essential relatable elements. So if I can manage to recreate a given film shot from Howl's Moving Castle, we should be able to do the same thing with my current project. It will be far from perfect, and far from the level of the original, but it will be very cool, and we're here for cool. If you're here for cool, my Ko-Fi is linked and it has lots of Blender files available for members, and this one, which is probably my most valuable project so far, will be on there once I'm done. I recently rewatched Princess Mononoke for a film project, and this one is certainly an absolute beauty. You can see why we can get away with creating some of the stuff that we do in 3D, because these background elements, while they are certainly watercolour, are actually very, very detailed. The shadows look soft, the highlights look soft, everything meshes together really nicely. 
Now this is making an exception obviously of our two characters on the screen, as well as the animals that they sit on top of. They're visually separated from the background by having their nice strong anime outlines, the more pronounced cell shading, and just slightly more contrasting colours. This works really well from the film, and while we're not actually creating line art in our 3D scene, we can still take inspiration from this separation, and use tools like depth of field to our advantage. You can see if I was to really crank the depth of field on this scene, we can have only our door and this line of objects in focus. And now that is a very, very strong focus element, essentially, but it's obviously far too strong. Now, I really want you to note our background here, because this is very key. You see these amazing nice cloudy skies, and I know looking at this you might be thinking 3D clouds just are not going to hit the same, they're going to look a bit too grainy, a bit too detailed, you're going to be able to tell the 3D volumetrics, and obviously while these issues are definitely hard to avoid, it's not actually the case all the time, and you could go about recreating some pretty insanely cool looking clouds, but I give you a much easier option, which is to go onto your browser and just look up some really cool images of clouds. You can use websites like Pixels, and websites like Unsplash as well, which is where I got quite a few of the royalty free backgrounds which I can use inside of my renders. And you can see this one is just a really nice piece of ocean photography and I have run it through some post-processing nodes inside of Blender to bring out some more contrast, give it some more saturation and vibrance, and that makes it look a lot more like the original. And you can see that the water gets quite nice and satisfyingly blue and reflects a lot of the qualities of our background plane even though it's just 2D. You can see side by side these are actually quite different color wise like their one's quite a lot more I think green and a bit more vibrant. Mine does have like a slightly more like grounded and less dreamy feel to it which um, I think you can argue either way like I think I prefer their like kind of aesthetic and as we talked about earlier Composition is one of those key elements and I recreated this with this image basically like in front of me at all times And so I was um, Obviously like mine's more like kind of like cropped in like to sort of this like ratio And I wanted this door which I created custom to be a bit more of like a hero for the shot But regardless you can see doors center frame We've got this nice curvature of the buildings around here The water sits at about the same level and the clouds sit above and these kind of like rusted beams just like peek out into the sky and we've obviously introduced some other elements and stuff like this debris, but it's all kind of like out of focus and just like sitting there to fill up some void. It's not really trying to drag attention away. So the composition is very similar and our mise-en-scene is also very similar. Stuff is different here and there, but I included the same kind of buildings in the background. I included this wedges of rusty metal. The, obviously, probably the most important thing is this door and making sure that the colors look right, the proportions look right, the positioning looks right. Like having all of the props kind of like mirror everything that was in the shot like it's gonna prey on people's memory of like seeing the original you know, even as far as these um bricks which are placed around the door i made sure that they color matched and they looked like kind of like the same props that were used in um suzume if you think of it like a film and work with it like a film i think that that can also work fine and then you just keep an eye on the big picture would be my big advice zoom out and get the same kind of perspective as the full shot which you're trying to recreate all the kind of emotions that you're wanting to convey and just think, do these look connected, you know? Would somebody like look between these and be like, oh, I recognize that from there? Well, then that's a pretty good start and then you can keep refining it from there. But yeah, I think that about covers it for today. So thanks so much for watching, you know, Ko-Fi supporters, you guys are much appreciated. Got four people on the list now. It's awesome. Thank you to my boy Max for being the latest supporter. I appreciate that hugely. And if you guys want to check out those blend files, you know, I'll link that in the description. Yes. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I genuinely do appreciate everyone who sits through and watches my videos. And let's keep grinding. Gambarimasu. Ah, matane. Thanks for watching, guys.